tell you a story, um, like everybody else. <laughs> uh, please don't tell my extended family, but I am not religious. I'm not completely sure why. I, I guess I just never really understood how humanity, as insignificant as we are, could ever really be so confident in something so impossible to prove. My mind has always been hardwired to seek answers, the sort of logical and mathematical explanations to all that is beyond human understanding. And yet, <laughs> for eight years of my own life, I was, as far as anyone else was concerned, a Baptist. I may not understand faith, and I may never have, but one thing that I do understand is anger. We tend to think of it as a thing that explodes, loud and bright and volatile, but it can also be quiet. It's funny that way. It, it starts small, but it grows. Like a tree with many branches, interconnecting and overlapping and straining to grasp that which is always just barely out of reach. It starts small, but by God, it builds. <laughs> What was once a spark becomes a forest fire. What was once fixable becomes far too powerful to ever be hidden, and so we must choose to break or be broken. There was a time in my own life when I almost let that anger, that clever little dichotomy of noise and rage and silence, turn me into something irredeemable. And it all started in a church. We stayed there for a long time in spite of a list of reasons to do the opposite. We stayed there and we listened to a man behind a pulpit who couldn't return the favor. We sang their sheet music and we ate their food and we almost let them break us. But one day, Mom decided to take us somewhere new. She loaded Preston and me into the car one Sunday morning in November. And when I saw the pride flag in front of that church, some intrinsic part of me knew I was walking into a trap. <laughs> I have never in my life been so happy to be wrong. I made a friend in a church, which is insane to me, uh, but it's true. I, I saw somebody else across the sanctuary, and even though I had yet to exchange a single word with this person, Somehow, I knew that I wasn't alone here. <laughs> not, not like before. I didn't have to stand at that window in the fellowship hall drinking a me an aggressively mediocre black coffee just to remind myself I was still alive. Um, <laughs> he smiled at me from across the sanctuary. And somebody started to play the piano. The tune was a familiar one, but I was far too busy collecting all of my scrambled thoughts off the floor to ever recognize it. I heard floorboards groaning beneath the weight of a hundred Sunday shoes. I heard laughter and small talk, and I felt every seam in my favorite sweater. It was a lot. It was loud. And it was too much. So I did what anyone would do and pretended to go looking for a bathroom. Um, and even that was a drastically different experience from what I was used to. There were no old women side-eyeing me. There was no spike of adrenaline as I slipped out of the sanctuary, wincing at the noise of my shoes on the floor. The room I found myself in was larger than I expected, with quilts as wall decorations and ceilings that were high enough to make just about anyone feel small. <laughs> The distorted symphony of piano and congregational unison bounced from one wall to the next, but the constant battering of thoughts against the inside of my skull felt quiet. The kind of quiet that echoes, and the kind of quiet that religion itself is made of. I have never understood faith. I've never understood God, or the Bible, or any of the parables I can recite by heart to this day. Because knowing something isn't the same thing as understanding it. All I know is that I would have stayed in that room forever if I could. Listening to the twisted, half-familiar melody of a religion that was all my own. Understanding at last what it was to be part of something that was both bigger and smaller 
than what any person alone could ever hope to be. I'm closing my eyes against the kind of light that shines through stained glass. But that is religion, isn't it? <laughs> the driving force behind the questions we don't know how to answer, the kind of existential wonder that's left when all the anger is gone, that is religion, and that is something that I know that the church I left behind will never understand. I might feel bad for them if they weren't so terrible all the time. <laughs> but I don't, because I don't owe them anything anymore. And I will never owe them anything again. And if there's anything in this universe that is worth my worship, it's that. Oh, my God.